Did you know that your mind can be your own worst enemy or your greatest ally? This isn't just a philosophical musing, it's a psychological fact. Our minds have an incredible power to shape our realities, a concept known as the self-fulfilling prophecy. The self-fulfilling prophecy is a fascinating phenomenon where our beliefs and expectations influence our actions, which in turn can influence the outcome. Essentially, if you believe something will happen, your actions may inadvertently cause that belief to come true. Consider the story of John. John was a man plagued by self-doubt. He lived in the shadow of his insecurities, convinced he would never amount to anything, and for a long time he didn't. He shied away from opportunities, afraid of failure. His negative thoughts about himself became a self-fulfilling prophecy. But then, John decided to change his mindset. He started to challenge his negative thoughts, replacing them with positive affirmations. He began to visualize success instead of failure. He told himself he was capable, talented and deserving of good things. And what happened? John's life started to change. Opportunities he would have previously shied away from, he now embraced. He found success in places he never thought he could. His newfound confidence attracted positive experiences into his life. His mind, once his worst enemy, had become his greatest ally. John's story is a testament to the power of the mind. It's a reminder that our thoughts can shape our reality. It's evidence of the self-fulfilling prophecy in action. But remember, this power is not reserved for a select few. We all have the ability to harness the power of our minds. We all have the capability to change our thoughts and in turn change our realities. So the next time you find yourself doubting your abilities or fearing failure, remember John, remember the power of the mind, remember the self-fulfilling prophecy, and most importantly, remember that you have the power to shape your own reality. So remember your mind has the power to shape your reality. Colors, they are more than just aesthetic appeal, they influence our emotions and behaviors. From the calming blues of the ocean to the fiery reds of a sunset, each color holds a significant sway over our state of mind. Businesses have been harnessing the power of colors for years, using them to evoke specific emotions and responses. For instance, fast food chains often employ reds and yellows in their branding. These colors are known to stimulate appetite and create a sense of urgency. Conversely, health and wellness brands lean towards greens and blues, colors associated with tranquility, health and trust. The choice of color is no mere coincidence. It is a calculated move designed to influence consumer behavior. The psychological influence of color extends beyond just marketing. It impacts our everyday decisions and preferences. So, the next time you find yourself drawn to a particular color, remember it might be trying to tell you something. Ever wondered why we often judge a book by its cover? This is where the halo effect comes into play. It's a psychological phenomenon where our initial impression of someone influences how we perceive their other traits. Picture this, you're in a job interview. The candidate walks in sharply dressed and brimming with confidence. Before they've even uttered a word, you're already leaning towards hiring them. That's the halo effect in action. Your perception of their appearance and demeanor has already influenced your judgment. But here's the catch. The halo effect can lead us astray. That confident candidate? They might be all style and no substance. They might lack the necessary skills for the job, or they might not be a team player. So the halo effect is a double-edged sword. It can help us make quick decisions, but it can also blind us to the complete picture. First impressions matter, but they don't tell the whole story. In a crowd, would you be the one to step up or blend in? Let's delve into an intriguing phenomenon known as the bystander effect. The bystander effect is a psychological concept that observes a peculiar pattern in human behavior. It suggests that individuals are less likely to offer help to a victim when other people are present. The more spectators there are, the less likely it is that any one of them will step forward. Quite paradoxical, isn't it? This phenomenon is deeply rooted in what psychologists term as the diffusion of responsibility. Now, what is this diffusion of responsibility? Imagine you're in a bustling city square and you witness someone collapsing. You look around and see dozens of faces all witnessing the same event. In your mind, you believe that someone else, perhaps someone more qualified, will step in to help. 
This is the diffusion of responsibility, the belief that the obligation to act is shared among those present, causing everyone to wait for someone else to make the first move. To illustrate this further, let's recall a real-life incident from the late 60s. A young woman named Kitty Genovese was brutally attacked outside her apartment in New York City. Despite her cries for help echoing through the night, none of the 38 witnesses intervened. This tragic incident served as a catalyst for research into the bystander effect, highlighting our often misguided reliance on others to act in crisis situations. But the bystander effect isn't an unchangeable facet of human nature. Awareness of this phenomenon can empower us to break free from the shackles of inaction. By recognizing the diffusion of responsibility, we can consciously choose to counteract it, becoming the person who steps up rather than blending into the crowd. So the next time you find yourself in a crowd, witnessing something that demands action, remember, the responsibility to act is yours as much as anyone else's. Remember, being a bystander is a choice, not an obligation. Can the mere belief in a treatment's effectiveness make it work? This intriguing question leads us to the placebo effect, a psychological phenomenon where an individual's condition improves due to their belief in the efficacy of a treatment, even if it's inactive or fake. Let's consider a clinical trial. A group of participants is given sugar pills instead of actual medication. Still, they're told that these pills are a powerful remedy. Even though the pills are inactive, a significant number of participants report feeling better. This is the placebo effect in action. The mind's power is astonishing, isn't it? The individuals believe so strongly in the treatment that their bodies respond as if they've received a genuine medicine. The brain releases endorphins, the body's natural painkillers, leading to a reduction in symptoms. This effect is a testament to the mind-body connection and the power of belief. It's not just about the medicine, it's about the belief in the medicine. Belief, it seems, has the power to heal. Ever felt uncomfortable when your actions didn't align with your beliefs? This discomfort, my friends, is called cognitive dissonance. It's a fascinating psychological phenomenon that pops up when our actions and beliefs don't see eye to eye. Let's bring this concept to life with a little story. Imagine a chap named Arthur. Arthur is a staunch environmentalist, always preaching about the importance of reducing carbon emissions. But one day, Arthur finds himself buying a gas-guzzling car, a complete contrast to his beliefs. This creates a conflict in his mind, a dissonance. To ease this discomfort, Arthur might do one of two things, change his behavior or adjust his beliefs. He might return the car and opt for a more eco-friendly option, or he could convince himself that one gas guzzler won't make much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. So when faced with a conflict, your mind will find a way to ease the discomfort. Ever wondered why a certain song can bring back a flood of memories? You see, music is more than just a collection of harmonious sounds created by different instruments. It's a universal language that connects us all, bridging gaps between cultures, generations and experiences. But it's also a powerful tool that can affect our emotions and memories in profound ways. Imagine a man named John. He experienced a traumatic event that left him feeling anxious and withdrawn. Traditional therapy methods didn't seem to work for him. He felt stuck, trapped in his own mind, unable to escape the memories that haunted him. Then, one day, he stumbled upon the concept of music therapy. Intrigued, he decided to give it a try. He began to listen to music not just as a form of entertainment, but as a therapeutic tool. He started with songs that evoked happy memories from his childhood, a time before the trauma. As he listened, he felt a sense of calm wash over him. The song served as a conduit, connecting him back to those joyful moments, helping him to remember that happiness was possible. John didn't stop there. He began to incorporate music into his daily life. He listened while he cooked as he worked, even as he slept. Each song he chose was selected with care tailored to his emotional needs at the time. Slowly but surely, John began to notice a change. He was less anxious, more open. He felt less trapped by his memories and more in control of his emotions. It was as if the music was helping him rewrite his narrative, providing a soundtrack to his recovery. 
This is the power of music. It's not just about the melodies and harmonies, the rhythm and the lyrics. It's about the emotions it evokes, the memories it triggers and the healing it can facilitate. John's story is just one of many. Around the world, people are harnessing the power of music to help them navigate their emotions, overcome challenges, and create a soundtrack for their lives. Music, it seems, is a powerful tool for our minds,